when I when I knew I was going to be a father, I had I had I'm not saying it was right, but I had a very clear vision in my mind what I wanted to teach him, and I wanted to do it early and get certain things ingrained in him. Um, the last chapter of my second book um, is a letter to my son. <clears throat> That's kind of the summary of all things of what it, what I believe it, what being a man is all about. Yeah. And it, this may sound a little bit morbid, but I wrote that because in the event that God takes me home earlier than expected ahead of schedule, that I could teach my son from the grave. Yeah. So um, that being said, from Gosh, before you're he was good. born, before he was even everything born, is thought out in advance. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's not before, right. before he was born, you had this. I was writing it as my wife was pregnant. Oh, gosh. Yeah. <clears throat> my type A is like <laughs> lowercase, lowercase A, no, and lowercase yeah, no, A. No, no, no I'm not I love right. the foresight. No, I love it. At least yeah. there's intent, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I had the right heart. Yeah. yeah. So, um, at a really early age, I would have these conversations with my son about like money, like yeah. what it takes to make a certain amount of money to be able to buy this thing, this toy, this meal, even you know, this this these uh, fortunate living accommodations that we we enjoy. Um, when my son was four, um, I sit on, on the board of a, a nonprofit foundation that funds uh, orphanages in Mexico called uh, okay. Corazon de Vida. And um, so when my son was four, we took him down to visit one of these orphanages. Now imagine, kid's four years old, right? Yeah. What's an orphanage? Yeah. So I'm, I'm explaining to him, like, you know, son, these, these kids don't have a mom and papa. He's like, what do you mean? Yeah. I'm like, well, they don't have a mom and papa at home. Well, why not? I'm like, oh, God. This is going to get deep now, right? Yeah, yeah. Because some of yeah. their mom and papas didn't love them, and they left yeah. them on the street, and they had to... And my son's, like, trying to process all this stuff. And I'm thinking in my mind, is that too much for a four-year-old yeah, to take on? Yeah, yeah. But I'm so glad I did it. So we're there, and, and he's playing with the kids, and he doesn't understand haves and have-nots. They're just all kids, right? So he's playing with his, with his, his friends at the yeah, orphanage. Yeah, yeah. At the Gee end... Friends. Yeah. At the end of the, the evening... He starts to gather up all his things and he has got some Legos and stuff. So he starts putting his Legos back in his Ziploc bag. And there's this one special needs kid that has his favorite Lego piece. And my son, kind of, he's four, right? He comes to me and says, Papa, that boy over there has my favorite Lego piece. I'm like, oh man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Look. How are I, you going to get yeah. finagle this situation? Yeah. I go, son, you're going to have to let that kid just have that Lego piece, man. Just give it to him as a gift. We'll get you a new one. Yeah, <laughs> he, he starts warming up with tears. Oh, and he's yeah, it's four, tough. Right? Yeah, yeah. And, and so I reiterate, like, these kids don't have a mom and pop. They don't have Legos. They don't have the things that you have. Sometimes they don't have food. Yeah. All right? And the reason, I don't care. I want the Lego. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but he was... My, my son was like Yoda reincarnated. Like, he's a really wise soul, you know? And he's like, okay. Okay. I'm like, that's it? Okay. I get it. All right. So he turns around, starts walking away, takes five steps, turns right around, comes back to me. as Papa, can I give, give that boy all my Legos? Yeah, I know. I'm like, that would be awesome. Yeah. Runs over the kids, calls all the kids and spreads out Legos. It was the most pure act of giving, right? The joyfulness of of, of an untainted heart giving. Pure right? and selfish. Pure and unselfish. And and I think giving him experiences like that at a really young age, he views the le the world through a different lens. Yeah. So for his eighth birthday. I can't believe you went for this either. Um, uh, I said, hey, you know, you're turning eight. What do you think of this deal? Mama and Papa will buy you eight gifts. And instead of having your friends bring you gifts, let's have them donate toys and supplies and toilet paper and toothbrushes and, and money to one of the orphanages. And then we'll drive down to Mexico and we'll, we'll, we'll deliver all the supplies to the orphanage. Yeah. And I'm thinking... This kid ain't gonna go for yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm not getting the yeah. Xbox. Because I wouldn't go over that at eight, eight years old. Hell yeah. no. Yeah, yeah. He's like, okay. So we threw this big party at the house, and we have fantastic friends, and, and we raised a little over four grand, and and all these supplies. On top of that, we took him down there, and you know, you have an eight year old that's fired up about delivering these supplies to the orphanage, and as all the kids are playing, you know, water balloon fights and everything, my son has a mop. And he's going around and cleaning up behind the kids.